Okay, uh, let's have a look at some uh, factor theorem and remainder theorem questions. Uh, these are useful for additional maths and for IB higher level. So here's the, the content that we need to know. Factor theorem, if x minus a is a factor, then f of a is 0. And the remainder theorem, if f of x is divided by x minus a, then the remainder is f of a. Okay, so there we go. For example, um, we basically stick in x is 2 into this one, and then the remainder, the answer is equal to 3. Okay, so that's the, the, the content that we're using for these questions. So let's have a look at some past paper questions. Here's the first one. Uh, when the function, and then we've got uh, uh, x to the power 4, blah, 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 divided by x plus 1, the remainder is minus 20, find the value of a. Okay, so uh, we're using the uh, remainder theorem. So basically you just say, well, uh, what value of x makes this bracket 0? It's x is minus 1. So basically you replace x here with minus 1. Make sure your brackets are in there. And we know that the answer, the remainder, equals minus 20. And that's pretty much it, really. We just uh, solve this equation, stick it on our calculator. You know, there we go. Stick all this on our calculator. It's all a number. Rearrange it. We're going to get a is equal to negative 1. Okay, that's about the, as easy as it gets for the additional maths questions. Uh, they do get more difficult than that. Um, let's have a look at another one. So we've got a function. There we go. It gives us a function. This time it's a cubic. Uh, this time they give us two possible factors and then what the remainders are each time. So this time we've got to find A and B. Okay, so first off, we know that when uh, F of 1 is equal to 3, so basically when we, what makes this bracket 0 when x is 1, so therefore we put in 1 into this, into this uh, function, and we get the answer of 3. And then the second one is, well, what makes this, think of it like a bracket, what makes this bracket 0 when x is negative a half? When x is negative a half, the remainder is 6, so we put x is negative a half into our original function. Again, make sure we put the brackets in. Uh, make sure we've got the squared written like that. Um, and then the answer is going to be 6. And then it's going to be a case of uh, solving the simultaneous equations. I haven't actually worked these ones out. I'm sure uh, you would be able to do these. Certainly if you're doing additional maths, you should be able to. So basically, we, we end up getting two separate equations. Um, solve them simultaneously. There we go. We get a is negative 12 and b is uh, 8. Okay, uh, let's have a look at another one. Again, very similar to that last one. So this time here we've got another cubic divisible by x plus 2 and leaves a remainder when divisible by 2x minus 1. Find a and b. Uh, same again. So uh, what makes this bracket 0? Well, x is negative 2. This time it's, a, it's, it's divisible, so therefore it's going to be equal to 0. So this is going to be our first uh, equation and our second equation. Again, what makes this bracket, think of it like a bracket, what makes this bracket 0 when x is a half? Um, so therefore, uh, this time, when x is a half, we get, I'm not sure what I've done there. So when we get f, when we put a half and we get a remainder of minus 35. So there we go. So we basically, there's our first equation, and then this is going to be our second equation. Um, same as before, we get simultaneous equations. Um, okay, this time actually I simplified them first. So the first one gave us 4a minus 2b equals 46. Uh, the second one, rearrange it. I think I times everything by 4. And then you ended up with a plus 2b equals minus 21. Okay, then we can just add the two equations, then solve them. And we get a is 5 and b is uh, 13. Okay, right, next one. This is a bit of a different question. This time we're using... Uh, well, we're trying to factorize a cubic. Um, there's a little kind of trick for doing this one. Um, we've got to try and do this without, you know, a graphics calculator or like equation solver, anything like that. We've got to be able to just do it, um, like, yeah, algebraically. So this is the trick. The trick says, look, uh, we look at the factors of six. It's going to have to be one, two, three, and six plus or minus. Now, one of those, like, because they've given it in this form here, uh, one of those will be 
uh, uh, will go into here and then give us a, an answer of uh, zero. So we want to find one of the roots. Um, and we basically just have to try some numbers, see what happens. Um, one of them is when, when x is 3. If you put x is 3 into this equation, you get 0. Actually, when you put uh, x is minus 2 in here, you get 0 as well. But let's, let's pretend that we, we, we found one of these roots. We found that when f of 3, that gives us an answer of 0. Okay, so we do that first. And then, basically, it's kind of, it's like the factor remainder theorem in reverse. Because we know that this gave us an answer of 0, then therefore x minus 3 must be a root. Because remember, um, yeah, when x is 3, that makes this equal to 0. Um, so therefore, we know that uh, x minus 3 must be one of the brackets. Uh, and then we've got some sort of ax squared plus bx plus c, because obviously it's a cubic. Um, and we don't know what the a, b, and c are just yet. But we know what the answer is going to be. The answer is going to be 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6. Okay, and then we basically equate coefficients. We say, well, x times ax squared must give us 2x cubed. Therefore, a must be 2. And also I look at, well, minus 3 times c must give me 6. Therefore, c is negative 2. So I can now fill it in like that. I've now got the 2x squared and the minus 2. The only thing left is to find out what the bx is. Now, that's a little bit more tricky because there's two ways of getting that. If you look at this one here, um, let's say I'll look at the x term. I've got a minus 11x here. How can you get an x term by multiplying these two together? Well, I could do minus 3 times bx. That's going to give me minus 3bx. Or I could do x times minus 2, which gives me minus 2x. And those two things there must be the same as this minus 11x. Well, there we go. I now get an equation. I can actually solve that and find out what is b. b must be equal to 3. Okay, so there we go. I've now got what a, b, and c are. That gives me this thing here. So this is my a, this is my b, this is my c. And therefore, I can now actually factorize this one. So I'm going to factorize this. Uh, yeah, I just missed off quadratic sign there. So we've got 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. So I, I factorize this. I get 2x minus 1. And x plus 2. And then what's my final answer? My final answer was actually, actually asking to solve the equation. So therefore I've got uh, x equal to 3. I've got x equal to minus 2. And I've got x equal to, this is going to be a half. So there we go. So those are my three solutions to my original quadratic, sorry, cubic equation. Okay, um, and then the last question. Uh, this is quite a long question. Um, here we go. So we get that polynomial. It's a cubic. It's given that px and the uh, differential of px are both divisible by 2x minus 3. Uh, we need to find out what a and b are. Okay, so if it's divisible by 2x minus 3, therefore, well, what makes this bracket 0? Well, that's when x is 3 over 2. So therefore, p of 3 over 2 must be equal to 0 because it's divisible. Okay, there's no remainder. So therefore, I stick that in. So I stick 3 over 2 into my equation. So I'm going to get a 3 over 2 cubed minus 4 3 over 2 squared plus b 3 over 2 plus 18 equals 0. That's going to give me one equation. And then also, I know that uh, the differential is divisible by the same thing. So therefore, let's differentiate this function first. That's going to be 3a x squared minus 8x plus b. So there, I've differentiated it. And exactly the same, I know that this thing also, if I put 3 over 2 in, I'm going to have to get an answer of 0. So I put 3 over 2 into x here and x here. And then I now get two equations. So again, I'm going to if I simplify these out, work out um, my two separate equations. If I solve them simultaneously, hopefully I should end up with a is 4 and b is minus 15. OK, so that's the first part. Uh, part B says, or part II says, um, using your answers, uh, now factorize Px completely. Remember, uh, A was 4, B is minus 15, so therefore this was my, my cubic. I basically replaced A and B with the values. So this is my cubic equation. Now we've got to factorize this. Now, I'm going to do the same sort of method as before, but I've actually got a head start. I actually know that it's divisible by 2x minus 3. So therefore, 2x minus 3 is one of the, 
the factors. I've got that in my bracket there. Same as last time, I've got sum lot of x squared plus sum lot of x plus a number. I'm going to use c, d, and e because I've already used a and b previously. And I know that the answer must be this thing here, this uh, cubic equation. Same as last time, well, I know that 2x times by the cx squared gives us 4x cubed. Therefore, c must be equal to 2. And I also know that minus 3 times e is going to have to give us 18. So therefore, e must be minus uh, 6. So I get that bit there. And then the only thing left to think of is, well, what is the, the, the d value going to be? Um, again, you can work this out uh, two different ways. I'll look, okay, let's look at the x squared term here. I've got a minus 4x squared, so let's put that. I want to find how to get an, uh, an x squared term. Well, I can do uh, obviously 2x times dx. That's going to give me an x squared term. Or I could do minus 3 times by this x squared. Remember, c is 2, so I'm going to do minus 3 times 2x squared. Those are the ways of getting my x squared term. That has to be the same as minus 4x squared, and therefore, again, if I solve that, I end up getting d is equal to 1. So there we go. I get uh, 2x squared plus x minus 6. I then want to factorize this one. I've already factorized this bit. So how do you factorize that quadratic? There we go. I'm going to get 2x minus 3 and an x plus 2. So there we go. That's a fully factorized quadratic. Oh, sorry, cubic. And then uh, the last part it says, hence values of x, find the values of x for which px is equal to x plus 2. Now, uh, remember, this was px. We just factorized this. This is what px is. When is px equal to x plus 2? Well, there's going to be one solution when um, x is negative 2. When x is negative 2, the left-hand side is 0, the right-hand side is 0. That gives me one possible solution. Now, if x is not equal to negative 2, I can actually divide both sides by x plus 2, and I'm going to get this. So divide by x plus 2, I get 1 equals, and then 2x minus 3 squared. Um, now I've got this. I can uh, basically square root both sides. I get plus or minus 1 equals 2x minus 3. And then if I solve that, I can solve it 2x minus 3 equals 1, or I can solve 2x minus 3 is negative 1. I should get x is 1 or x is 2. So my three solutions are x is 1, x is 2, and x is negative 2.